God, we're here tonight to be in your presence, to have an encounter with you. So Lord, we invite you here to do whatever you want to do. God, our ears are open, um, our hearts soft. I pray that you would speak to each one of us and we would respond. We would respond in obedience. We would respond with a yes in our heart because that's worship. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, glad you're here tonight. Why don't you uh, say hi to someone and uh, we'll get the lights on and get ready to go. All right. Well, hey, I'm going to be a little annoying tonight, so uh, I'm a little picky. Sorry. If I could get everyone on the sides, can you make your way into the front? Is there room for people? Sides, front. Over here, sides, front. Can y'all do that for me? Uh, just fits with tonight. So thank you, thank you. Come on over. You can sit right here, right in front. Is there room? Is there room? There's room. You guys got a whole front row. There we go. Y'all can find. I see two seats. Can y'all do that for me? Right there. This will help me tonight. I know, man, I'm picky. Annoying. I don't do that very often. You don't want to ask people to move seats. They get, whew. Thank you guys for being such a good church, though. Hey, I'm so glad you're here tonight at Next Level. And I want to briefly, I actually have a message I really want to speak and preach. It's in my heart. And I want to give us a chance to respond uh, to the Holy Spirit. So every night's a little different here at Next Level. But tonight, I really do feel like I have a message that God dropped in my heart. And uh, many of you know this. I am in a season of prayer and fasting. I shared that uh, five or six days ago, uh, whatever Sunday was, and just kind of shared that I felt like the Lord asked me to do that before we started CP, and then uh, COVID hit, and then we didn't know when we were starting, we kind of, like, I got a lot of excuses, anyone, you know, and so, uh, so we never really did that, and then I just felt like this is a season, uh, the Lord was really challenging me to do that, and so um, I, I'm doing that, and, uh, you know, I, I love that a lot of you have jumped on board, and uh, just excited to see what God has in store. So I want to share with you some things that uh, in these whatever days we're in, six, seven, five, who knows. When you're not eating food, everything just is blurry. So, uh, but, uh, you know, someone actually asked me, how are you doing? And I responded, hungry, tired, crabby, moody, annoyed, but man, God's doing some good things. So uh, we're going to look at Acts chapter 13, verse 2. Acts chapter 13, verse 2. Here's what it says. It says, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. I want to look at that verse, kind of break it down a little bit. It says this, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting. While they were worshiping God. Another translation says, while they were ministering to the Lord. It actually means while they were serving God. While they were connecting to God, while they were spending time making sure their heart was focused and postured, they were worshiping God, they were serving Him. I don't know if you've ever been to a restaurant, I have if you can't tell, and you get a waiter or a waitress come and what do they do? They're there to serve you, they're there to get you what you want. What do you want to drink? What do you want to eat? That's what it means. They were worshiping God. They were there with the heart posture to serve him to say, what do you want? Not, hey, here's what I want you to do for me. And that, you know, like that would be weird if the waitress came to me and said, hey, I want you to go get a Coke for your, you know. Uh, no, you can get me a Coke because that's what you're the waitress, waiter, you know. So uh, that's what it was. They were connecting to God. They were serving him. So it says, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting. Fasting. 
Many of us are, you know, maybe going through fasting. There's people that are not doing soda, people not doing coffee, people just doing water, people doing a Daniel fast. You know, while they were fasting, while they were saying no to things they would typically say yes to, they were saying no to. And I will say this, so I said it Sunday, prayer connects us to God, fasting disconnects us from the world. If we are fasting but are not praying, are not in God's word, not ministering to him, not worshiping him, we're just dieting. We're just going through the motions, there are, like through the health benefits of fasting. There, there are so many health benefits. In fact, non-believers in Jesus fast. Some of them go 21 days with nothing but water. Some go, they cleanse out their system. They hit autophagy, which your good cells start eating your bad cells. You know, there's so many benefits to healthy eating, fasting, diet, all that stuff. So if we go into a season of fasting and we are not praying and ministering to the Lord and connecting, it's just dieting. It's just, you're you're reaping the healthy benefits without the spiritual benefit. So it says, while they were in a season, while they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, the Holy Spirit said, I don't know about you, but we need to listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. What is he saying? What does he want? And the Holy Spirit said, while they were worshiping and fasting, and I got three points. First one was this, fasting and worship, what it does is it increases our sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. It increases our sensitivity to what is he saying. God is always talking, and sometimes we don't hear him. And it's because there's so much noise in our lives. So much chatter, so much stuff going on. How how many of you, we live in a day, we're busy. We got work stuff. We're we're sitting in church. We could be dealing with work stuff. We could could have stuff at home that we're dealing with. We got kids that we're dealing with. We got to take them everywhere. And man, it just gets noisy. And God's speaking and you're like, is that him? I don't really know. I I can't really hear him very well. It just seems kind of loud and there's so much noise going on. I'll never forget, so I was uh, doing pre-marriage counseling with someone, and through the conversation we were having, I found out that they never had had Buffalo Wild Wings before. You've never eaten at Buffalo? I love wings. And so I had a horrible idea. I thought it was a good idea at the time. Let's do our pre-marriage counseling for dinner at Buffalo Wild Wings. I love B-dubs, but have you ever been there before? It's loud. It's loud. You got all the TVs on, you know, like everyone. It was hard to hear. It was hard to have a real deep conversation. And they were talking, and I was like, I was trying to look at their mouth, like, what are you saying? Like, you know, like, it's just loud to have, like, really serious pre-marriage counseling kind of stuff. And, And so it would have been awesome to just be in more of a quieter setting, and I could just hear them talk. See, what worship and fasting does is it makes us more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And we're living in a world where it's so noisy that when you take a season to connect to God and disconnect from the world, his voice becomes so much clearer. Even in just these days, I feel like there are things that I've been praying for that I'm getting some answers and strategies and clarity on moving forward, whether it's the church or whether for me personally, it, it's just, he's always speaking. Another way to say it, too, is if you ever had one of those uh, radio stations, I know now a lot of people have Bluetooth or it just goes right through your car, you know, but you had to like 98.7, you had to turn to 98.7 and try to connect your phone to that, you know, like to that little thing that would connect to your phone, you're trying to get, you know, and it's kind of staticky, and, and you're like, oh, wait, it's 98.5. I, I got to turn it to ni- one more. I, I'm getting something, but it's staticky, and I just that little bit of change, and, and now, oh, it comes through pretty clear. That's sometimes what it is with God. It's, he's speaking, but the frequency just isn't connecting as well, and then when I go through a season of prayer and fasting, it becomes much more sensitive to the Holy Spirit, and I'm getting on the right frequency. It's not that he needed to change, but I got some stuff that I need to, to change, and I get right on his frequency, and I start to hear his voice so much more clearer. Then it says, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work in which I have called them. Set apart for me. Here's the second thing. Worship, fasting, helps us be separated for the Lord. Worship and fasting helps us be separated for the Lord. 
If you were to ask me how my relationship with God was doing two weeks ago, I would have told you it's doing awesome. Man, it's good. Like, it's been one of great seasons. Man, it's been a great season here at church. It's been a great season in God. I've been spending a lot of time in prayer. And then if you were to ask me today, I'd say, man, there's so much stuff God's showing me that I need to deal with and work on and repent of and surrender to him that I didn't even realize was in my heart because how many of you know you just get living in life and then when you take a season of prayer and fasting it really starts to reveal things that he wants set apart that he wants consecrated to him and so then you're like I'm, I'm good I'm good and then you're like oh my goodness I'm not good at all I have so much you know when we're talking about purity a lot of times we think we're so pure, but it's because what are we comparing our purity to? If we compare our purity to someone else, we're like, I'm doing pretty good. But you compare it to Jesus and you're like, holy cow, I'm not even close. If you take a white bunny rabbit and put it on uh, green grass, it looks pretty white. You take the same bunny rabbit and put it on freshly fallen snow and you're like, oh, that's got some dirt on it. See, purity is freedom from anything that contaminates. Purity is the quality of being faultless, uncompromised, or unadulterated. Pure water is free from any other substances. Pure gold has been refined to such a degree that all dross has been removed. And pure life is one in which sin no longer determines the choice, choices one makes. I'm telling you what prayer and fasting does is it separates us unto the Lord. And he starts to show us things in our heart that we didn't even really know that was there. Oh, I, I thought everything was good, but now I'm starting to see some unresolved issues toward my parent. I thought everything was good, but then there was words spoken uh, over me that I actually took and they were truth to me. And they're not true. And so, therefore, it is tainting my decisions because I believe them to be true. And I don't even realize it's there until God starts separating, consecrating. Whether it's gossip or unconfessed or unrepented sin. Psalms 51.10 says this. It says, create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. When we start comparing ourselves to other people, we start comparing ourselves to other churches. You start comparing to other stuff, and you're like, oh, I'm, doing, I'm doing good. But then when you start comparing yourself to Jesus, man, it sure humbles you to say, God, create in me a pure heart, Lord, because I got so much that I didn't even realize was there. And then it says this. It says, set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. My third point was this, it sure gets your hunger back for the things of God. Create, like, for the work to which I have called them. It gets our hunger back for the things of God. I don't know about you, but I could remember moments at camp, at a men's retreat, at other times in my life where I'm like, God, here's everything. You can have every dollar in my bank account. You can have every ounce of energy I have. I'll move wherever you want me to do. I will do anything you want. I'm all in. And then how many, you know, sometimes life sure gets, starts to get to you. And then you're like, oh, God, what are you, you're asking for what? I got to go to church today, you know. And what fasting does is it gets that hunger back. To say, hey, I'll do anything you want, God. Here I am. My life is yours. It restores that hunger. You know, maybe, honestly, for us, some of us, our hunger for God, our calling on our life, um, isn't as strong as it used to be at one point. And it's not because God's changed. But maybe our focus just gets off track a little bit. Our eyes just get a little bit off focus. And uh, our calling is actually fueled by our consecration. I'll say that again because that's so good. That should have been an amen somewhere. Come on. Our calling is fueled by our consecration. 
It's fueled it. When you set yourself apart, you take a season of prayer and fasting, and you consecrate yourself to the Lord, the calling is fueled through our consecration. I'll never forget, I was sitting in this room, pacing right here and praying. I was the only one in the building. And I felt like the Lord was speaking to me. And it was, I got a calling on your life, Justin. I have a calling on Connection Point. And I started to dream. And I started to think, like, my, my mind started to expand even the possibilities of where we were at. To think, oh my goodness, this isn't about going from one service to two services to reach more people. It was just the vision in my mind started to really expand of the potential of what this body and this people and me as a pastor and this church could do for the impact for the kingdom and my my vision started to increase beyond where I could even see it at that moment at that time but then I heard these words I will use you to the level of your surrender I was like oh (laughs) the callings there doesn't mean we'll actually accomplish the calling Because he'll use us to the level of our consecration, to our surrender. See, we all have gifts and talents. But our surrender will determine if we accomplish the calling that God has on our life. We all have gifts and talents. God has placed gifts and talents in each one of us. God has a calling for each one of us. But our surrender to him will determine... Whether that calling is reached to its full potential. 2 Timothy chapter 20 verse 21 says this. Now in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay. Some for honorable use, some for dishonorable. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable, he will be a vessel for honorable use, set apart as holy, useful to the master of the house, Ready for every good work. In a great house, there's vessels. There's gold, silver, wood, and clay. And guess what? You don't get to choose which one you are. It doesn't say that. It says there's vessels. Some of you gold. Some of you silver. Some of you wood. Some of you clay. You don't get to choose what your calling is. You don't get to choose what gifts God has placed on you and inside of you and he created each one of us different and he's given us gifts and you don't get to choose that therefore if anyone cleanses himself from what is dishonorable he will be a vessel for honorable use here's what you do get to choose you do get to choose if you are going to be a vessel for honorable use or dishonorable use you do get to choose your consecration You do get to choose whether your vessel's cleansed. You do get to choose not your calling, but your consecration. And your consecration or your surrender and what you lay down to him will determine how much that calling will be. Does that make sense? God has a calling, but it doesn't mean he'll, that that whole calling will come to be because it really has to do are we honorable vessels for his use i want to give you five things really quick that we could do honorably how to honor god honor really brings his presence honoring god we could one honor god with our time i want you to think about this are you using the time that god has given to you the precious time that you have to glorify the lord in psalms 144 verse 4 they are like a breath their days are like fleeting shadow here's the second one honor god with your talents These are God-given gifts and abilities that he's given to you. Are you using those for the kingdom? Matthew 25, 14 through 30. You can look it up in your own time. Honor God with your temple. You know, 1 Corinthians 6, 18 through 20 says this. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against his own body. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Is your body a temple? Is it cleansed? Is it, is it, is it kind of, you know, like your house? If you don't clean your house, it gets dirty. 
And what happens in life, it gets dirty. And is there dirt there that it just needs to be cleansed out? And how many know if you don't cleanse it often, it gets really nasty. Fourth thing is honor God with your treasure. This means your finances. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Proverbs 3, 9 says, honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. I can tell you this, if you've never read the blessed life, please do so. Because you have a choice to go to the altar and honor God by bringing first fruits or dishonoring him by keeping what is his. It's your choice. Number five, and let me say this, I don't say it because we need your money. We don't need your money. God is the provider here. It is more about your heart to honor God. Number five, honor God with your heart. Isaiah 29, 13 says, the Lord says, these people come near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship of me is based merely on human rules they have been taught. A lot of people worship that way. They go through religion, they go through the, what you have to do, and they come into a church and they honor God with their lips, but their heart is far from him. I'm going to ask just Justin to come up on the guitar, and you can sing in just a little bit. But I want you to stand on your feet. And if there's any way, Tara, you can flip the light off, that would be awesome. But I just want you to have some time to ask God, what is it, Lord, in my heart? Is there anything in my heart that needs to get right? Is there anything that you're working through? Is there anything I need to lay down? Is there anything I need to surrender? Is there anything I need to let go of? It is not what does Pastor Justin say. It is what does the Holy Spirit say? What is the Holy Spirit speaking to you? Because the Holy Spirit wants fellowship. He wants relationship. He wants intimacy. We've been talking about it in this series, the Spirit-filled life. This is not about religion. This is not about coming to church and going through the motions. This is not coming to church because it makes me feel good. It, it is, I want to be in his presence. And I want relationship with him. And as he speaks to me, as he says to he, he wants us to be set apart. He wants us to be different. He wants us to think differently, talk differently. He, he wants us in our heart to be consecrated to him, purified, cleansed, a, a pure vessel to be used for honorable use. And I want every single person to hear this and know this. God has a calling on your life. It is big. It is huge. It is awesome. It is incredible. I don't care what your upbringing was. I don't care how messed up your family situation is. I, I'm telling you, God has a calling on your life, but he can only use to the level that you're willing to surrender to him. And so when people look back, I'll just say for me, uh, when people look back at Connection Point, and I just believe God is going to do awesome things here, incredible things, and they look back, they're going to look at the result. They won't know the time in prayer of surrendering to Him. And it's the same for you. God's got big things. But are you willing to surrender? Are you willing to let go? What he shows you. Are you willing to say yes to him? So we're just going to take some time to worship. I want to tell you. We all have things in our lives to surrender and lay down. But I, I just feel like if there's some of us in this room, I don't even know how to say this. For some of us in this room, you, you know there's something pressing. It's pretty, you, you really, it, you're done with it. You, you're ready to move on. You're ready to let it go. You're ready to surrender. You're ready to lay that down at the altar and trust God. I just want to open this altar space to you. I made some extra rows up here. I'll have some, 
I'll pray with you. If any of the prayer team want to pray, you're more than welcome to. And we'll just kind of pray with you. And so it, it's not like for everyone. I, I mean, I could respond to every altar call there's given. But I'm just saying, you know. You know, right now, this is a moment. This is a moment that in my mind and in my heart, I picture that there is an altar up at the front, and you're coming to lay something down. It's going to die tonight. It's going to be done tonight. I don't know what it is, but you, you just, you know. And in the season of prayer and fasting, God's saying, hey, that's been awesome for the level that you're at, but I want to take you to a whole nother level, and that can't go with us. And so to get there, you got to let it go. And I'll tell you, man, in serving God, it seems like that's been my continual journey. I'm, I'm there, God, man, this is awesome. And then God's like, I got a whole nother level, but you can't take that pride with you. Sorry. <laughs> but I already gave it up, Lord. Now you gave it up to the level I showed you, but now I want, I want more of it. I want more humility. I want more surrender. I want more trust. I want more forgiveness. I want, you know, and he just keeps asking for more. So I'm going to do this. Everyone just close your eyes, bow your heads. If you know that's you, just raise your hand right now. One, two, three. Okay. Quite a few of us. I didn't want to think I was crazy. So if you raise your hand, and even if you didn't, you feel you need to respond, Justin starts singing. I just want you to make your way up here. We're going to pray with you. just want to encourage you to worship the Lord. Ask him what he wants to speak. And so, Lord, we just invite your presence here. Whatever you want to do, Lord. Whatever you want to do, in the name of Jesus. Worship you with our surrender. We set ourselves apart. Father, we're here to worship you. We worship you with our surrender. We set ourselves apart. Father, we're here to worship you, to worship you with our surrender, to set ourselves apart. Father, we're here to worship you, worship with our surrender. We set ourselves apart, we set ourselves apart for you, we're here to worship you, Father, to worship with our surrender, so we set ourselves apart, we're here to worship you. Worship you. I'm here to worship you. I'm here to worship you. 
ones we hate and the ones we praise. You're the name above all names, Father. The name above all names. You're 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 the name above all names, Father. You're the name above all names, Father. You're the name above all names. You're the name. ask just uh, Justin on the guitar for a second. I just want you guys to join with me. I want to take just a few moments and just kind of close out this night, but I want to pray. And I just want you to join with me. And so, uh, God, we just come to you right now. God, we surrender ourselves to you. God, we surrender ourselves to you. And whatever that is, whatever you show us, whatever you reveal to us, God, our answer, we've already made the decision tonight at Next Level. Our answer will be yes. We don't have to question it. We don't have to wonder. When you are saying we trust you, worship isn't about just singing songs. It's not about just coming in here and going through the motions. It is our life laying it down as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to the Lord. So for some of us who maybe can't sing or play an instrument, man, we could be some of the greatest worshipers in the entire planet because we're willing to surrender and consecrate our lives unto you and be set apart for the calling that you have. And so, Lord, I pray that a group of people will surrender themselves 
at such a deep level that the calling will be bigger than any of us could ever dream. Because you can use a pure heart. You can use a heart that says yes. You can use a heart that you can trust. Lord, and I want to take time right now to pray for our fifth Wednesday service. Then two weeks from tonight, and I am praying for an outpouring of your Holy Spirit, Lord. God, we need your Holy Spirit. I pray for people that have never experienced the feeling of your Holy Spirit would be filled and be changed and transformed. God, I pray for people that have maybe just gone through motions, but they, it would be like a light would just go inside their hearts and it would burn for the rest of eternity, God, that it would be a life-changing service. I pray people would be set free from bondages and drugs and alcohol and addictions. I pray that hurts and pains that people carry around would be healed. I pray people who are struggling physically would be healed, Lord. I pray that lives would be changed. It would be a catapult moment for us as a church. So I, I wanted to pray right now in this moment because it gives us two weeks to prepare our hearts, to be prayed up, to even take this time to gear up for that moment. So God, let us come in with expectation. Let us come in with expectation, believing that you are going to move. God, let us be hungry for you. Let us be more hungry for you than we've ever been hungry before. Something has to give to tear down every lie. Set this wrong from right. When he had a love, something has to give. I feel it in this room. Holy Spirit, because when you have your way, something has to give. Tear down every night, set the wrong thing right. When you have your way, something has to give. 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 Something has to break right now in your name. Something has to break. Something has to break. Something has to break right now in your name. Something has to break. Tear down every lie, set the wrong thing right. Cause when you have your way, something has to break. 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 Feel it in this room.
something has to break. 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 In your name, right now in your name. Something has to break. Something has to break. Leave you, leave me through it. for some of us maybe we just need a little more time in worship and so uh, if you guys are fine playing a little bit longer if not we can throw on worship music but no. uh, but I'm going to dismiss us and you can get your kids and go out to the lobby but for some of you just need a little bit more time we're just going to worship a little bit longer and uh, maybe just kind of go a little bit deeper than you've been before because, you know, reality is a lot of times when God's trying to take me to another level, there comes a season of repenting. Repent for where I'm at. Repent that I got this in my life. I repent this is in my heart. And when God starts to show you that and he brings you to repentance, it's a great sign. He's trying to take you to another spot with him. Like I said, you can't get there until you let it go, until you get it right, until you forgive. What I find interesting is there's a verse, I think it's James 5, 17. It says, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. And a lot of times in repentance, we only talk to God and we don't talk to people. We don't have that relationship with people. And that's why I will always say I love Sunday mornings, but I believe life change best happens in circles rather than in rows. We need relationships. And so maybe after today, one of your things that God will have is having a relationship and getting out whatever you need to get out, confess and get it right with and move on. So Lord, I just thank you so much for everything that you're doing. And Lord, I pray right now for some of us that maybe need to stick around and worship a little bit longer. I pray that you, man, that we, that we press in even more and something would break, something would change, something would shift as we take this time as we're consecrating, setting ourselves apart. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.